Hi, I'm Dawn Cavanaugh, APQS Education Director. You know, the beauty of having a long arm is that you can get so much quilting done with one fell swoop. 8, 10, 12, or 14 feet long, depending on how big your quilt is. That's how long the APQS frames come in. It makes it easy to do the top and bottom borders because you can see them all, all the way along the entire length of the machine. But it's a little more interesting trying to do the side borders of your quilt. There are lots of ways to accomplish that. One of the ways would be to just quilt the borders down as you go. Unfortunately, that means a little more planning. For example, if you're trying to match up feathers or make sure that you come out with an even number of uh, designs when you come down to the end, it takes a little bit of math and a lot more planning. And you have to be a little bit better at your starts and your stops in order to make those continuous lines down the sides look like they've all been one pass. So many years ago, when I was struggling with that whole concept, I decided maybe it was easier to take the quilt off and actually spin it and turn it. So that's what today's video is all about. I'm going to show you my tricks and tips for taking that quilt off, turning it 90 degrees, and putting it back on the frame to make those side borders, which used to be this long, become now the length of the machine so that you can see the entire border at once and quilt it as you go. For example, take a look at the patriotic quilt behind me. While I certainly could try to figure out how to plant the USA letters all the way down the quilt, my brain works a lot better if I'm actually looking at those letters upright. So turning the quilt allows me to do that. It also allows me to space those letters out evenly all the way across the border. This quilt I made doesn't actually have a traditional border. Instead, it's got undulations in and along the sides where the stars dip in and out. This is also another example of why it may be easier to take the quilt off and turn it. That way, I was able to actually take a look at how to place those feathers all the way around the corners, make sure that my undulations matched, and as the feather grew up and down and around the sides, I was able to make sure that there was no obvious break all the way along. That way that feather does look like it is circling the quilt the entire way. This applique quilt pattern by Piece of Cake Designs was beautifully appliqued by my friend Pat Johnson and I had the opportunity to quilt it. But Pat decided not to do the traditional stems that connect the flowers along the border. Instead I used quilting designs to do that. Taking this quilt off and turning it to do the side borders made the design execution a whole lot easier. It also allowed me to make sure that all the tiny stippling that's actually filling in the background of the quilting looks more continuous and symmetrical. It's easier for me to do that across the top of the quilt and to be able to look at the size and the scale rather than to have parts of it be rolled up on the roller where I can't see what I've done before. Now I know the idea of taking the quilt off the frame and putting it back on again can be extremely intimidating. But I'm here to tell you, over the last 26 years that I've been a long arm quilter, I have turned about 95% of the quilts that I have custom quilted. For me, it makes it so much easier to be able to see that border in one shot and quilt it as I go, than to worry about matching up those starts and stops, planning the design, and even worrying about the fabric walking down and making a little dog ear on the lower left and right corners. The secret, however, is in how you stabilize the sides of the quilt so that the turning process is super simple. Now, lots of long armors have different ways of loading the quilt the first time through. Everything from zipping it on to pinning it on, even using snapping tools. I've even heard of some people using Velcro and staples. The trick in making the turning process simple is using the appropriate pins no matter what original method you use to attach the quilt to the frame. So instead of machine basting the quilt as you go, you're going to use pins that are soft and supple enough to bend around your roller, but not so soft that they'll actually stay bent, or too stiff so that they'll actually tear the quilt. So my favorites are these clover flower head pins. Clover flower head pins, they come in packages of 20, they're a little different than the packages of 100. I know it's a little extra investment to get them in packs of 20, but the length and diameter is slightly different. They're 55 millimeter by 50 millimeter. These are just soft enough to stabilize the quilt along the sides, but then bend with the quilt around the roller as I go. 
Let me show you some other pins and what they look like and why these pins are so important. Here I've got a heavy duty corsage pin that a lot of quilters use to attach their quilts to the frame, a traditional quilting pin, a T pin. This blue headed pin is actually a clover pin, but it's called a fine uh, clover flower head pin, and that's too soft to actually use for this technique. And this one is from the clover package that I'm talking about. To make this technique work, we're going to put the pins actually perpendicular to the rollers. You'd think that it might make more sense to put them in this way as you're stabilizing the edges, but that's actually what makes it more difficult to turn the quilt. Instead, we're going to put these pins in parallel to the edge of the quilt or perpendicular to the rollers. More about the direction of the pins in the moment, but let's take a look at the pins themselves. Here is that corsage pin. I was talking about very sturdy, heavy duty pin. When you look at that and how it lays against the roller, it's very difficult to bend it around that roller. That tip wants to stick up. And then it actually keeps that bend. So we don't want to use that one for turning because it's going to be uh, difficult to use later and it also could tear up the quilt. The same is true for the heads that, um, pins rather, that have a ball head. They tend to be a little bit shorter and while they'll work okay for a little while, eventually they're going to get that bow in them and make it more difficult to turn. And T-pins, you can tell already by the thick, stout nature of those that they're going to be difficult to turn and lay, oh, in fact, I can't even bend it down around this roller at all. That one really isn't a good possibility for that techni this technique. The blue-headed flower pin is great for piecing and other techniques, but not for this one because it's too soft. You can actually see that my pin is already bent. It's such a fine metal that it will bend around that roller, but it will keep bending and get out of shape. So just like Goldilocks and the Three Bears, my, my just right pin is this clover flower head pin, as opposed to some of the uh, uh, more big box brand pins. These work absolutely wonderfully. They bend around that roller with the quilt, but they have enough stability that they stay nice and straight. So once again, clover flower head pins, packages of 20, Remember, no matter what method you use to originally attach the quilt to the sides, with the turning technique, instead of machine basting down the sides, we're going to use pins to do our job for us. We're not quilting off the edge of the quilt if you're turning the quilt to do the side borders, therefore you don't have to worry about running into those pins as you go. In fact, another great reason to uh, use the turning technique is if you've got long vertical lines, such as stitching in the ditch, it's much easier to stitch one long continuous stitch across the entire quilt than to try and chop it up several times with every ad additional advance of the quilt. For me, it's also easier, as I mentioned earlier, with the orientation for my brain. Sometimes I can't necessarily see designs like the setting triangle in my head very easily set on its side. For me, it's often easier to quilt it upright or even upside down than when it's turned on its side. So taking the quilt off and remounting it sideways gives me the opportunity to see that and quilt it much nicer because it's looking at it the way my brain likes to look at it too. So with the pinning technique, we're going to substitute pins, but where you stand and how you attach the pins makes a difference in addition to whether you're right or left-handed. No matter whether you're right or left-handed, everybody should practice turning the quilt in a clockwise fashion. Because we're starting with the quilting at the top of the quilt and working our way down to the bottom or opposite side, any fullness in that quilt is working it way, its way down to that lower edge. If we were taking this quilt now where I'm standing at the top edge of the quilt and were to spin it counterclockwise, the part that isn't quilted is going to end up up here on the upper right hand corner when viewed from the freehand side of the machine. If I reattach it and try to quilt that area, it means that the things below it have already been quilted and I could end up pushing fabric into the quilted area creating a tuck or a pleat or a, a buckle on the back side of the quilt. But if we take this quilt and spin it clockwise, that excess fabric still has room to work its way off the bottom edge of the quilt so that we don't end up with pleats, tucks, or puckers on the back side. So I'm going to start attaching the pins with one caveat. 
You have to remember that I'm left-handed, so I'll describe how it will be if you're right-handed. You'll also have to think about where you stand when you put the pins into the frame. Let's reorient the camera so you'll understand better what I mean. I've changed the camera angle so that you're viewing it from the perspective of the needle or freehand side of the quilting machine. Remember, you're going to take the quilt and spin it clockwise. So the left edge of the quilt will end up getting mounted to your pickup roller over on the far side of the table. The right side of the quilt will end up coming down here and being attached to the backing roller when we rotate the quilt. We won't use the quilt top roller when we turn the quilt. That's because after all the layers are stitched together, there's going to be a lot of batting and extra fullness here. And we don't want that extra fullness using up our space for quilting or pushing the fabric down. Instead, we'll just ignore the quilt top roller on the turning process and use the backing roller. Because the right hand side of the quilt will end up spinning itself down and getting attached to the backing roller, we're going to want to put our pins in this side of the quilt so that when we rotate it, the pins are oriented in such a way that you can pull a pin out of the three layers and stick it right back in, catching the quilts, uh, the canvas rather, underneath. So where you stand when you reattach the quilt sandwich back onto your canvases does make a difference in how those pins go in. You'll want to make sure, as I said, that they're oriented so that you can pull it out with your right or left hand, whichever you use, without getting harpooned, and then stick it right back in, catching the canvas underneath. For me, I stand on the freehand side when attaching it to this frame, but I have enough room on the pantograph side to walk to the back of the table. Therefore, my pins will actually go in opposite directions, so when I turn it, they'll still match the way it's going to be oriented on the frame. If you happen to pull your pickup roller across your frame to load things, then typically your pins always go in the same direction for both sides of the quilt. When you stick the pins in the sides for your turning, yours will go the same direction so that when you spin it, they're oriented correctly for you to pull it out and attach it to both of those canvases. It's going to make more sense once I show you, so hang in there. Let's take a look at what I'm going to do next, which will be to stabilize the two sides of this quilt with those pins. Before I actually put the pins in the sides, I think it might make more sense if I do a quick little demonstration just off here on the side border to show you what I mean. When I stood on the pantograph side of the table as a left-handed person, my pins went in this direction. But when I attached the quilt top to the quilt top roller, my left hand put them in in this direction. Remember, we're going to turn that quilt clockwise. So I want the pins that are on the right-hand side to orient themselves in such a way that when I spin the quilt, this pin will end up looking just like it did the first time when I put the pins in holding the quilt top in. So on the right side of my frame, I'll put the quilt pins with the tips towards the back of the machine. And on my left side of the frame, I'll put the pins so that the tips are towards me. Here they are marching for me as a lefty in a counterclockwise motion because I stand on both sides of the machine to attach that to the area. As a right-handed person, with your right-handed person coming in, your pins would go just the opposite. Let's spin these around and take a look. As a right-handed person who stands on both sides of the machine to attach the layers, since the right side will come around and attach to the backing roller, we want the pins on the right side of the quilt to point down towards you. Then when you spin the quilt, they'll be just right for you to pull out with your right hand on both sides. If you stand on just the needle side of the machine to do all your attaching to the quilt frame, and you're right-handed, your pins will both come in from right to left. That means that we're going to orient the pins on both sides like this, coming down towards you. That way when you spin your quilt clockwise, 
those pins will rotate around and be oriented just right for you to pull them out and catch the canvas underneath. Of course, for lefties like me, it'll be just the opposite. I'm one of those people who pins all three layers to the pickup roller at one shot, especially when I'm doing a border design or a custom quilt. I don't float my quilt tops because it gives me more control and I'm not stitching off the edge like I do with pantographs. Take a look at how close the pins are to each other because that's how close we'll put them as we're pinning the sides. They're basically head to tip and trying not to overlap because that's what we'll use for an interval when we reattach the quilt to the frame. If you have any fullness in the quilt, first start by moving your hands from the interior out to the outside edge of your quilt to smooth out that extra fullness. Of course, I've got my little tension sample going on right here. Remember, as a lefty, my pins are going to come down on my left side of the quilt. So I'm gonna try and stay out of the camera's eye, reach down and put that pin in about a quarter of an inch in from the edge of the quilt. Roughly tip to toe. Trying to do this with my right hand here to keep it out of the way of the camera. So I've attached the pins just as far as I can down until we meet the quilt top roller. I've moved the camera to the right side of the quilt now. Smooth your fabric out as necessary and then add the pins a quarter of an inch in from the edge. Remember as a lefty my pins have to point towards the backing can or excuse me the back of the machine. Your righties who will stand on both sides of the machine those pins will go the other direction. Try to keep my arms out of the way here. I'm just gently smoothing out that backing as I'm inserting those pins. Remember these pins are actually going to stay in as we go. They're going to roll around the roller with the completed quilt. So we're going to make sure that they're close enough together to hold all the layers and keep this border from shifting as we quilt the body of the quilt. Anything that's a long vertical line, like this side border, I'm going to wait to stitch until I've actually turned and remounted the quilt. Once you've got both sides of the edges of the quilt uh, pinned, go ahead and attach your clamping devices. Uh, it's important to note that there should be extra backing and batting beyond your pins. Once you've pinned, you'll know if you're pulling too tautly with those clamps because the pins will distort the edge of the quilt. So take a little bit of re uh, relief on, and pressure off of that. When we spin the quilt, I'm actually going to trim away much of this excess, which will get in the way of me reattaching it. Instead of using the clamp, I'm going to pull the elastic end of the clamp all the way over to my quilt sandwich and use one of the pins to attach it. Now if I pull too hard, nothing happens, but there's also no way that the machine or any ruler base is going to run into that clamp as I go. In fact, I often do this instead of the clamps all the way along. Well, the pins are in correctly. I've got the clamps and the elastic attached. I need to get busy and quilt. I'll quilt this far enough along so that you can see how the turning process happens. Remember, I'll be doing the top border, long horizontal lines, any block designs that I'm going to do through the rest of the quilt, and then the bottom border. But I'm not going to do the sides or any long vertical lines. One little quick tip, when I'm doing borders that turn a corner, I'll do the corner portion now so that when I turn it, I just need to connect the two bits and pieces from the left side to the right side. I don't need to refigure out how that design is supposed to make the corner turn. Well, I'll get busy quilting. I'll show you a few shots as I'm going along and then we'll turn the quilt. I finished the top border and just what I'm going to do around the corner. So now as I roll the quilt ahead, I will add additional pins on the left and the right sides with them oriented exactly as the other pins were. Remember, these are going to stay in the quilt as I roll. 
If you find that a particular pin is in your way when you are doing the upper corner or upper right corner border design, just slip that pin temporarily out of the way and then go ahead and stick it right back in again so that it's in place for when you go ahead with the turning process. So as you expose more unpinned area, simply add pins as you go and continue quilting the center. I've quilted enough that I've needed to roll ahead and again add more pins before quilting the next section of the quilt. But I wanted to show you how those pins are now wrapping up and rolling around the actual uh, pickup roller. That's the whole purpose for those softer pins is so that they will bend with the quilt sandwich right around the roller, not poke through the quilt and distort it, but keep all of those layers consistent and nice and even together. Well, I've reached the bottom of the quilt top. I have done what I wanted to do in the bottom border and just around the corner. Since I personally prefer to pin my quilt to the frame, I pin it to the quilt top roller. You can see that I have released those pins for the quilt top and I've just now got a quilt sandwiched on with the backing fabric. So I'm going to get a scissors and actually trim or cut the quilt away about an inch from the quilt top's raw edge. That way it can be squared later, but it'll make it a little faster for me and I can just take this little extra piece then and uh, get rid of it or give it back to the piecer. Again, this is the right side of the quilt. So for me as a left-handed person, this right side is going to spin clockwise, just like all righty and lefties. And these pins are going to turn so that I can take it out with my left hand and stick it right back in, attaching it to the backing roller. Now the camera may not pick it up very well, but maybe I can move it a little bit so that you can see this bubbling right here. That might cause you to panic if you've never turned a quilt before. But remember, that's because there is no quilting in this outside border and into this wedge shape because I'm going to do those later. That's why it's so important to use those pins and put them in before you do any stitching. That makes sure that this border stays stabilized in line with whatever you're doing with the rest of the quilt. Once we turn it, that fullness will be used and uh, taken up with the quilting once we've mounted it back to the frame. Now that I've taken the quilt off of the quilt top roller, those puckers are a little bit more visible. Again, don't panic. Those will be quilted in once we turn the quilt and remount it to the frame. Now I've just got this little scrap piece of batting to get out of the way. And I'll take those pins out that were holding the backing fabric in place. And then we're going to turn the quilt. APQS machines have this great leveler bar that helps keep the quilt nice and flat as I continue to quilt, no matter how big it gets with the batting and the backing piling up here on the pickup roller. But once you turn the quilt, I still have to remember to go underneath that bar so that the new sandwich, once it's uh, turned, is also nice and flat. So to help me remember to do that, instead of running over and unwinding it and starting to remove the pins, I'm going to unwind it enough so that the canvas itself can come under this bar and I'll pull it up and across the top before I take the pins off. That way it'll be much easier to remember to go underneath it and reattach the pins once I turn it. Well, that auto fabric advance on the deluxe table makes unwinding it super simple. So I've unwound quite a bit of the canvas and I'm going to reach over and take the entire quilt sandwich and pull that whole thing up and over the leveler bar. It's going to make sure that when I reattach it, everything is still under the leveler bar. Let's straighten that out a little bit. Now, the left side of the quilt, when you're standing at the needle, is the side that's going to get attached here. 
So I'm going to take the pins out of this side and give the quilt one quarter turn. That's going to make sure that those pins are oriented for me to take them out and stick them right back in, catching the canvas under the, underneath. Another thing I like about those flat flower head pins is how easily and quickly they come out. I can just grab the sandwich and tip the heads of those up a little bit and grab several at a time to get them out of the quilt. Okay, we're on the pantograph side of the table now. We're still going to spin the quilt 90 degrees clockwise. Here you can tell this is the section that I had where I did my small little bit of sample testing. After spinning it clockwise, you can see that my pins are now oriented correctly for me as a left-handed person to pull them straight out and stick them back in, catching the canvas along with the entire quilt sandwich. If you are right-handed and had put them in the other way, that would be correct for you. I don't need all of this extra batting and backing hanging past the edge of the quilt now. All of that is going to actually get in my way. So I am going to use the scissors and trim that down to about an inch away from the raw edge of the quilt top also. We're just about there. Now all I need to do is locate the center of the pickup roller and the center of the quilt top. We're gonna to line those up just as if we were starting fresh with this whole process. Because the canvas edge is straight, and I took that extra time to make sure that the whole length of the canvas was straight before I started, all I need to do is line the marks up and then using my fingertips, I'm going to feel the edge of the canvas and line the canvas edge up with the quilt top. So there will be that extra inch of batting and backing hanging past the entire pinned surface. So starting in the center, lining up my marks, I'm going to take out that very first pin and stick it in about a quarter of an inch in, catching the canvas underneath. Now here's the next trick to making sure that you smooth out all of these puckers because that was originally stretched out on the frame the first time. Before you take the next pin out, grab the whole sandwich in your hand and gently tug away from the pin you just put in. In other words, we don't want the backing to have any type of a buckle in it. So it's a tug, pinch, to feel that the canvas and the quilt top are even with each other, and pin. Tug, pinch, pin. Let me move the camera so that you can see a little bit closer. Tug, pinch. I'm pinching to make sure that the top of the quilt is lined up with the canvas itself and then pin. Simply pull that out and stick it right back in. That's why it was so important to turn those pins the correct way because then with a little practice you are going to be amazed at how fast you can reattach that quilt. When you get to the end of your uh, quilt sandwich you may need to add one extra pin or so because you now have that extra bit of batting and backing hanging past the corner. Well, I'm going to head the other direction from center, change my pins and insert them, and then I'll flip that over so that you can see what it looks like on the back side of the canvas. That's what it's going to look like. We've got that one inch of batting and backing hanging past the canvas, but the canvas is right in line with the quilt top edge. That's how we know it's nice and straight. See how fast and easy that was to reattach with the pins already right there and oriented correctly? I'm going to slip to the other side because we still have to attach the other edge to the backing roller.
And there's a little trick I'll share with you to show you how to flip the canvas so that you make sure you have it going underneath your quilt top roller. I'm liking how my quilting is turning out, but I still need to do the side borders that are now switched to be the top and bottom. So that bottom edge of the quilt is going to come over that unquilted section and get attached to the backing roller. Before I do that last step of attaching the quilt to the backing roller, I am going to trim off the excess batting and backing on this side, just like I did on the other end of the quilt. That'll make it load much nicer and easier on this, on this side of the machine. Of course, this is just a, a smaller baby quilt, but on a large quilt, you're going to have a lot of extra batting and backing filling up that quilt. So we're going to mount it to the backing roller, as I've mentioned before. To make it easier to do that and wind things on much more simply, we're going to take the backing canvas, unroll it, and pull it up and over the quilt top roller. That's going to allow us to get at those pins nice and easily and then we're going to be able to take the quilt, bring it over to this side and pin it on super simple. I've grabbed the remaining edge of the quilt and pulled it across now to the backing canvas which has been looped over the quilt top roller. Now it's just a matter of aligning the center marks and pulling the pins out and sticking them in just as we did on the other side. We will align the quilt top with the edge of the backing canvas. Here's the center mark for our canvas, center mark of the quilt. Feel with those fingertips that the top of the quilt and the canvas are in line. First pin comes out, goes right back in. Tug away from the pin to smooth out the backing and the whole quilt sandwich and then out and in. All the way out from the center to the left and to the right. Add an extra pin at the very end if you need one. With the quilt now reattached to the pickup roller on that side and the quilt backing roller on this side, I'm ready to wind it up and go back to the top and start quilting. Since I took this backing canvas under the quilt top roller, you can see that now it's automatically going to be underneath and just right for winding up. As you wind it, do the same things you normally would. Smooth it out. Make sure all of your straight seams stay straight along the quilt. Smooth any rough edges. And keep winding making sure those seams stay straight. I wanted to show you what my quilt top looks like on the opposite end before I wind it up and put the clamps on. Don't panic if you look and see that your fabric is wrinkly like that too. Remember, the quilting in the middle has drawn up all of the other parts of the quilt, but without any quilting up there, it's going to look puckery. That's normal. Once we get the quilt smooth on the frame and get our clamps reattached, our quilting will take care of that fullness. When I first started quilting, you saw my little trick of pinning the elastic edge to the quilt to make sure that I don't put too much pressure and distort it. But once I've turned the quilt, that fullness and quilting wants to draw up the quilt top. So I switch to the clamps themselves. So that gives me a little more power and strength. And I often will clip that very first clamp onto the canvas since my pins will want to pull in a little bit and that will help to make sure that that's nice and smooth. Then the other clamp is going to go out here right across from the border section that I'm going to uh, quilt. Since I've done quilting around the corner, I don't have to worry about bumping into those clamps. If the quilt you're working in has multiple borders, or in my case, uh, this the little V-shaped section that I didn't quilt to make it easier during the turn. I will actually quilt from the inside out, working my way up towards the top. That way, if there happens to still be any bit of fillness, it's going to work up towards the top of the quilt, where eventually it can work off, as opposed to coming down into the body of the quilt, where I might end up with a pleat or a little tuck on the back, where I've already stitched. So here's what the quilt frame will look like with your quilt turned 90 degrees and remounted.
The body of the quilt will be on the quilt backing roller, slipped under the quilt top roller if you have that installed, and attached to the pickup roller with those clamps, keeping the quilt nice and tight in the areas that you're going to quilt. I would imagine if you've never turned a quilt before, you're probably skeptical about how that top and bottom border is going to ease in. Well, before I rolled it ahead, I wanted to show you this is what it's going to look like after I did all of my quilting. So as you can see, all of that fullness was taken up by the quilting. And again, I started in the center border and then quilted up towards the top border again to make sure that I wasn't quilting in any pleats or puckers. Well, that bottom border is now done. It's always exciting to see what the quilt looks like when it's all done. Well, all that's left is to take the quilt off and add the binding and I am done. I hope you found out how easy it is to actually give that quilt a turn and put it back on so you can do those side borders all in one fell swoop. You now know the secrets to doing that. The right kind of pin and making sure that you put the pin in and orient it in such a way that whether you're right-handed or left-handed, when you give that quilt a quarter turn clockwise, that pin is turned and matches the way that your hand likes to do the pinning. That'll also depend on where you stand on your frame to insert the pins. Now, of course, if you use a different type of attachment method, such as leader grips, red snappers, or zippers, you'll bypass that mechanism using the turning method if you're going to use pins to reattach the frame. I hope it all makes sense to you, and you'll check out more of our helpful videos on our APQS YouTube channel. Be sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, and join in our conversations on social media. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching.